What's happening, fellas? It's your boy, Hardcorn, and today we're gonna be reviewing Miss Kosaka Shizuru. We'll look at her skills, supporter setups, and most importantly, if she's worth it or not. Before we get started, though, I just want to tell you guys to like and subscribe. It helps me out and lets me know you guys want more content, so let's get into it. Shizuru has very long range, but is still considered a melee character. She has nearly ranged character length on her attacks, but all the power of melee. She leads the way in kiting too, because of her basic attack's extremely large range. Due to this length, it seems that they took notes on how Noah worked with parts of her basic attack, and refined it into this big cone in front. Shizuru is the combination of Murasaki, Shiranui, and Asagi. Shizuru gets to do some of those girls' best things, while also maintaining her own image. She's an infiltration specialist, so she has to adapt to whatever situation she sees. Can't hurt to have learned a few things along the way in terms of seeing others battle. Being in infiltration and recon, she's all about being at a distance and impairing pursuers if her cover is blown. Shizuru's main things are distance and ailments. Many of her skills have large coverage and can also apply some sort of debuff. She even has her own unique debuff, Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb applies a slow, and also does an explosion 3 seconds afterwards. It's perfect for her attrition style gameplay. While the explosion doing damage is fine on its own, the real winner of it is that she can apply slow to multiple enemies at once. With this slow, she can escape and reposition to deal more damage or set up another skill. Her whole concept is to put them in a bad situation and whittle them down, and she does that extremely well. All these ailments make her a perfect candidate for the supporters that deal increased damage to enemies with debuffs. Even her signature supporter tries to push you towards a build like that. Her basic attacks are very weak for the most part, but the sheer number of hits is what counts. She won't destroy armor like a Greek fire Yukikaze, but Shizuru has crowd control on the level of Murasaki and Shiranui with the basic attack. The sheer hit count makes her a superb candidate for Momochi weapons, as she has so many AoE attacks, and with crit setups behind her, she can apply defense down stacks extremely quickly. Shizuru's basic attack is also very slow to start, but gets faster as she goes along. The slow start leaves her vulnerable for a whole second, so she's a prime target to get punched by the greater demons and get knocked right out of it. She only moves forward just a little bit, so her tracking during the basic attack is not too hot. However, the cone that she attacks in is very wide, so she goes for quantity, not quality, in terms of making a direct hit. In terms of base stats, at 81 she is barely below average HP at 5194. Very low base attack, 3360, which puts her barely above Astaroth. High base defense at 5152, so she can really take a hit. Not Kiara level, but still very good. Very high crit sitting at 4704. With these stats, we can tell she'll do a hit and run sort of setup with the high latent crit to squeeze in as much damage as possible before running away also to shore up her very low base attack stat, alongside high defense so she can actually run away from a hard hit. Shizuru having many hits on her basic attack, alongside a lot of her skills dealing multiple hits, makes Shizuru a prime candidate for particle generation. With this, she can use her signature weapon's effect much more often, or the Momochi weapon effect, or just start spamming ultimates all the time. In terms of tower effectiveness, she can hold her own pretty well, Coming standard with the healing field helps patch her up in the fray. Of course, she can't stay in there for maximum effect, but anything that slows down enemies in the tower or impairs them severely will take a character leaps and bounds above others. Shizuru can offer safety and stability with all of her slows and debuffs. I personally attest to this since I took her to my run of 50 to 75 in the tower. She comes with her own problems too since a lot of her skills require her to stay still and few defensive debuffs to protect her during that. No armor on many of her attacks make her susceptible to getting back attacked by a teleporting ninja or gunfire and then getting interrupted. Gunfire and other projectiles in the tower will eat up her HP and without any burst healing in her kit, she can't take a trade with enemy timonins or large enemies, which leads back into the concepts of whittling down opponents and putting them into a bad situation. Shizuru's crowd control is a godsend in the tower, but it doesn't allow for total recklessness like Murasaki does. Shizuru also comes with incredible damage potential. She has real shotgunning power in her skills since they take multiple hits and deal huge damage. They all have quirks about them that make them situational, but also high damage cascades. Let's take a look at what makes this happen with some of her skills. We'll start with Whip Grip. 
This skill does the opposite of what many double dash skills do, in that she brings enemies closer to herself on activation. This is good for her, since when it has the correct amount of supporters in it, it has a range that extends further than her basic attack, so she can snag the stragglers and bring them to her. It's really nice for setting up those Rose Rondo combos. Though if you whiff this attack, she's got an incredible recovery with it, and it leaves her a sitting duck. All effects on this skill are about impairing in some way. Depending on the color, she can inflict groggy, speed down, defense down, you name it. Strike zone for this skill is enormous too, so hitting multiple enemies or being a little off target doesn't matter too much. Solid skill that brings a lot to the table. Shizuru comes with two double dash skills. This one, Chasing Strike, functions like a traditional one. Works just like Murasaki's in that she tags the enemy with her whip and pulls herself to the target, damaging all enemies when she's being pulled towards the target. Works from just about any range. That's the thing with these type of skills. They don't need to have the whip or tentacle or what have you hit. You just need to activate it and they'll fly to the target, regardless of distance. Chasing Strike functions similarly to its sister. However, Strike comes with a lower cooldown and effect cost. The effects from the colors are relatively similar. Queen's Whip works on the same concept as Asagi's Renjinka. Dodge into attack and fan that hammer to deal incredible damage. However, Shizuru goes to distance by adding in a few little lunges forward. It's really simple stuff, but it lets her get in close to enemies that hop just outside of the range. You just gotta love it when something like that happens. The skill takes a very long time to complete, so Shizuru is a sitting duck for its duration, or until you end it early. This is a great skill for scooping up small to medium enemies. Enemies that are large and bosses will run straight through the whipping and smack her for a ton of damage. You have to make an opportune moment for this to get the entire thing out. Plant Invade is a very strong ranged option for Shizuru. It allows her to disengage from even further distance than her whip basics. At correct settings, it goes from one projectile to three. It's awesome for her to disengage while also keeping the pressure on. It even has a pseudo stun with it knocking up enemies built in. Its ability to disengage is further hammered home with its ability to apply the debuff Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb applies a low level slow and then a local explosion onto the enemy. Fantastic on hard enemies and really high armor bars. They're slowed, eventually damaged, and prevents armor from regaining for a moment. With some finessing, you can actually use this for some severe shotgun potential. The plants spawn not where Shizuru's whip strikes, but like one and a half meters ahead of it, which means not pressing her up against the enemy. Positioning is key with Shizuru, and we all can't be perfect. She has two tools that sort of work with each other to give her a favorable situation. Sprout Garden and Plant Wall work hand in hand with each other. Sprout Garden is Shizuru's ability to heal and slow. It drops the healing field like Emily, so you have to stay in it to keep healing. The same field also gives a powerful slow to enemies inside it. Perfect for Shizuru's escape or to get off a big skill. Plant Wall is an activate on damage to apply a debuff and let Shizuru's recovery animation play out safely. Both these skills can be taken to allow for Shizuru to play an almost turtling build with her being able to recover and also reposition. Sprout Garden is Shizuru's only form of healing, and with her constant motion play style, it somewhat hampers the effectiveness. Plant Wall, while it does activate off damage, is still a defensive tool. Both allow her to stay in the fight and be more effective. They shouldn't be overlooked, either of them. Now we're on to Rose Rondo. It's the skill many people mention when talking about Shizuru, and with good reason. It's by and far Shizuru's strongest skill, and synergizes very well with many of Red's supporters. Not to mention the incredible range it has. It's a big 360 spin that hits multiple times. It applies defense down on every hit, however it doesn't stack. So that means if you didn't nab someone with the first hit of the combo, that's okay. The other ones after that will also give defense down. It's a great range, great damage, it's a great debuff, I mean what could go wrong? 18 seconds is the base cooldown, and at max cooldown skill, it goes down to 12.6 seconds. It's Shizuru's longest cooldown, but also her strongest. It also has just the tiniest amount of startup too. If she goes to use this in a crowded area, she's got a good chance of getting interrupted and the cooldown starting. So a little setup goes a long way. Her timing in an art is a divisive point. It is good, but also not really necessary. Yes, her basic attacks are inherently weak, and this shores up that aspect. However, it only changes the damage output and adds super armor to the very end of the skill. It's simple yet effective. Though in a 3 slot setup, it takes up one space. Shizuru has many tools she can take that are very strong, 
so it can be a good idea to omit the time in an art in favor of other skills you like. Personally, it wouldn't hurt her a bit if you took it off. Her basic attack is really for armor chipping and particle gain while you wait on other low cooldowns or big skills. Her time in an art is great though if you're doing a particle charge build. Let's whip up some theories with Shizuru. Let's have some aspects to consider. She likes good distance, has a lot of hits, can apply her own debuffs, as a kiting professional, wants enemies impaired, so let's think about what can accomplish this. We'll go green first. Green is home to the game's staple powerhouse supporters, and putting them on Shizuru will let you hit as hard as your imagination will allow. Green on skills for her is all about stuns and groggy. This way she can pin down a group to get off a full Queen's Whip or make an easy escape. A brutish answer would be to stack crits and melee damage supporters. It's why green is so very strong. Shizuru's high latent crit makes it super easy. Green wants to blow things up and she's a demolition man with all those tools in her hands. In blue, Shizuru is all about slowing people down and doing damage from a distance. Seed Bomb doesn't do the greatest of damage, but it gives a reasonable slow. Blue also lets Shizuru tank tons of damage with the many sources of damage reduction inside. Sadly, she doesn't get to make use of the specific type boosting supporters, but there's plenty of strength within blue to make up for it. It's got snares for holding enemies in place, powerful AoEs, and healing boosters as well, in the form of those two super great R supporters. Red is where Shizuru really gets to shine, and she has a bunch of skills that inflict the fence down. This means she can crack them and it's time to go in for a finisher. Red is also home to a ton of damage boosting supporters, flat or specific. Shizuru can really take just about anything, though she can inflict a lot of debuffs. Things like her own supporter and the Suzune that increase damage to debuff enemies is where it's at. Red sadly doesn't get a lot in store in terms of slowing enemies down or snaring outside of a few supporters. It's up to Shizuru then to keep her distance and engage properly so she doesn't get caught out, alongside using her Sprout Garden to slow enemies down enough to keep them held in place for a big hit. Let's put it all together. Shizuru is very good in most areas, well-rounded and rewards smart play with long combos and high damage. I'd put her on a similar level as Asagi, can do a whole lot in any color and fights very effectively regardless of the situation. Asagi however has a nice, fast, and flowing basic attack. Shizuru has hers flowing for sure in terms of visuals, but in actual mechanics she's just sitting there in place. Requires a little practice in her distance since her skills are further than her basic attack. Though, with effective whip usage and proper skills, she can corral huge groups of enemies into bundles like a professional rancher. Then she can really whip them into shape for huge damage. It's up to you to find proper solutions to keeping distance so you don't get whacked during a setup and have to wait the duration like an overzealous idiot. Personally, how could you say no to some Shizuru? She's a big Genki teacher who teases just like Shiva Nui. What a fun gal. Though the question is, is she worth it? Yes. She is so worth it. You could pick her after getting one of your three starter girls and be just fine. Shizuru is ready for all challenges, though I just hope you're a fan of flying kites, because she sure is. Oh lord, it wasn't that something. Thanks for coming on out and learning with your boy Hardcorn. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment too because I love to hear from you guys and maybe get some ideas from where to go next. And as always, I'll see you next time.